Hi folks, more chapter 14 problems, and here goes. Um, a steel tank in a car is completely filled when the temperature is 17 degrees Celsius. How many gallons of gasoline will spill out of the 20 gallon tank when the temperature rises or rises to 35 degrees Celsius? So we want to know the change in volume. That's going to be my question. The original volume is, it's a 20 gallon tank, so the original volume is 20 gallons. Um, the change in temp is 35 degrees Celsius minus 17 degrees Celsius. Um, and that is going to be the change in temperature. Now, one of the challenges here is we have the tank and we have the, we have the tank and we also have the gasoline. So the gasoline is going to expand and the tank is going to expand. And so we're going to look at these um, each a little bit at a time. So first off, we are going to look the, at the expansion of the tank, okay, the expansion of the steel tank, because both are going to expand. So the change in volume of the steel tank is going to be equal to the original volume, coefficient of volumetric extension for steel, and the change in temp for that situation. Now the change in temp, 35 minus 17, the change in temp here is 18 degrees Celsius. That change in temp will be the same for both situations. I have a 20 gallon, whoops, gallon tank. Steel, remember, is a, um, uh, like a recipe, but we, on our sheet we've got 12. And if you don't have a beta for a, or a coefficient of volumetric expansion, coefficient for volumetric expansion can be found by taking three times the coefficient of linear expansion. So the coefficient of linear expansion for steel is 12 times 10 to the negative 6 per degree Celsius. If I want to find the beta or the volumetric expansion, I'll take three times that. So the coefficient of volumetric expansion for steel is going to be 36 times 10 to the negative 6 per degree Celsius times my change in temperature of 18 degrees Celsius. So the change in volume of my steel tank is going to be 20 times 36 times 10 to the negative sixth times 18, and the difference is going to be 0 0.0129. Two nine six or zero one three zero gallons. Now this is the change in volume for steel. Okay, now we have to worry about the gasoline. Gasoline itself is also going to expand. So I'm going to change colors, and now we're going to worry about the expansion of the gasoline. So the gasoline is going to go under a very very similar situation. So the change in volume is going to be the 20 gallons of gasoline we begin with. The coefficient of volumetric expansion for gasoline, we look that up on our constant sheet, and it's 950 times 10 to the negative sixth per degree Celsius, and the change in temperature is 18 degrees Celsius. So one more time, 20 times 950 times 10 to the negative sixth times 18, and the change in volume for gasoline is 0 0.342 gallons, and this is for the gasoline. Now the question is how much gasoline is actually going to flow over in the overflow tank? Well, it's going to be the difference between those two changes in volume. So the change in volume of the gasoline minus the change in volume of the tank is going to be 0.342 gallons minus 0.0130 gallons. And if I do that subtraction, 0.342 minus 0.013, I end up with 0.329 gallons. About a, a third of a gallon of gasoline actually is going to go on that overflow cup. And that's one of the reasons tanks sometimes have those overflows because with ex thermal expansion that's going to happen. Alright, let's do the next problem, number 10.
how much heat in joules is required to raise the temperature of 20 kilograms of water from 15 to 95 degrees Celsius. So we are now talking about heat energy transfer. The big equation is Q is MC delta T. Q is quantity of heat, so quantity of heat is what we're looking for. The mass of the water is 30 kilograms. The change in temperature is going to be that 95 degrees Celsius minus the 15 degrees Celsius. So that change in temperature, let's go ahead and subtract because we're, we have that handy. That's going to be our 80 degrees Celsius. And C, if you recall, is the specific heat. And the specific heat of water is, whoops, just C, capital C for specific heat, is 4,186 joules per kilogram degree Celsius. That's the specific heat of water if we're dealing with kilograms and joules. So I can take all of this, put it in that equation. So let's do it. Quantity of heat's going to be 30 kilograms times my specific heat for 184, oops, 186 joules kilograms degree Celsius times my 80 degree change in temp. Celsius is going to cancel. Kilograms will cancel. I'll end up with an answer in joules. And so quantity of heat when I do that is going to be Oh, let's see, 80 times 4186 times 30. I got a big number. Joules are very, very small. Convert that into scientific notation. 1.00 times 10 to the 7th joules. Very small number of uh, amount of energy in a joule, so it takes a lot of joules to do very much. Let's try and do one more. Here goes. Blood can carry excess energy from the interior to the surface of the body, where the energy is dispersed in a number of ways. While a person is exercising, 0.6 kilograms of blood flows to the body surfaces and releases 2,000 joules of energy. The blood arriving at the surface has a temperature of 37 Celsius. Assuming that blood has the same specific heat as water, determine the temperature of the blood that leaves the surface and returns to the interior. So here's what we know. We are looking at a Q is MC delta T situation. We have 2,000 joules worth of heat that we are going to disperse. The mass that we're talking about is 0 0.60 kilograms. Um, and we have a change in temperature that is going to be the original temperature minus the final temperature. And my original temperature is 37 degrees Celsius. My final temperature is my unknown. That's the thing I'm looking for. And it says, let's pretend that the specific heat of water is very close to blood, and it is very, very close. And that's going to be 4,186 joules per kilogram degree Celsius. So this is going to be a straight problem like this, except we're putting this subtraction in for change in temp. So let's go ahead and put all of that together and see what happens. So we're going to have 2,000 joules of heat in 0 0.600 kilograms of blood with a specific heat of 4186 joules ki kilogram degree Celsius times 37 degrees Celsius minus T final. Now that's a minus and I apologize I'm just going to erase that stray mark it's going to cause some trouble to somebody somewhere probably me. All right. Now, how are we going to do this? This subtraction, we're going to have to do a multiplication, and then we're going to use the distributive property and distribute this through both characters in that parentheses. So I am going to combine 0 0.6 times 4186, and I'm going to, these two multiplied together is 25, 1, 100, uh, the kilograms are going to cancel. This is joules per degree Celsius times 37 degrees Celsius minus T final. 
and that's going to equal 2,000 joules. Now we're going to distribute that. We're going to use that distributive property. And this number times 37, this number times t final. So this is going to be 2510 times 37. So I'm going to end up with this first value is going to be 92900 joules. Um, this degree Celsius will cancel, so this will be in straight joules, minus 2510 joules per degree Celsius times T final equals 2000 joules. Now, in order to solve for T final, I have got to get all of this other stuff on the other side of the equation. So what I'm going to do is this. I am going to subtract 92,900 joules from both sides. 92,900 joules from both sides. So 2,000 minus 92,900. So this is going to be a negative 90,900 joules equals negative 2510 joules per degree Celsius times T final. How am I going to get T final alone? I am going to divide both sides by a negative 2510 joules per degree Celsius. Negative 2510 joules per degree Celsius. Joules will cancel degree Celsius or in the sub-basement, so they're going to come up top. So T final is going to end up being, T final will end up being, uh, I'm going to do the division on my calculator, I end up with 36.2 and that's degrees Celsius. Alrighty, that should do it and we'll see you next time. Bye.